What is up, everybody? For what is another My Team series? This is episode number 12. We are now on, and we're going to be racing in Qatar. Last time out, we raced in Japan, and it was an okay race. I mean, we almost hit the back of our teammate there, but we did come home and finish just outside the points in P11. And our teammate, Jack Doohan, actually came home to pick up a P15, I think it was. So it was actually not a bad performance from him. He was on course to finish in potentially in the top 12, but he had a bit of a bottle job towards the end of the race, uh, lost a bit of pace, and uh, he dropped down the grid. But our car is feeling a little bit better. I mean, we get a P11 on pure pace. There was no retirements, no nothing. We did that with pure pace. Our qualifying was good as well. Both cars into Q2, and you can see we've only got six points so far this season. So we want to try and pick up a few more points towards the end of the season and hopefully get closer to Haas so that we can get past Haas in that constructors. You can see in practice, we were predicted to finish P11 in qualifying when we did the quali qualifying simulation. And I'll tell you what, it was an okay lap as well. It wasn't anything special in practice. So if we could pick up a, a Q2 appearance, potentially even a Q3 appearance on this sprint weekend, it could be huge. Because remember, it is a sprint weekend, so we do have a sprint race where the top eight will score points. So if we can put this car inside the top 10, we could potentially get points in the sprint race and also the main race as well. But we've got to deliver when it matters. A high-speed track like Qatar certainly suits our car uh, pretty decent as we go through this first sector. And it's such a fun track to drive. I love this track. I mean, some people, you either, it seems like you either hate it or you love it. And I, I, I fall under the, the category of uh, I love this track. You know, it, it's fun to drive. It's a very high-speed track. You're just constantly weaving around corners. There's only like one or two slow corners around here. or Only really one. And that's the hairpin just after the first sector. And as you can see, we come up to the line. It's a P4 currently. And as we come into the pits, it's a P9. Our teammate is about a second behind us. Jack doing, mate. What are you playing at? We're on like 107 AI as well. I upped it a little bit from the last race just to be sure and we're a second clear of our teammates so we might even have to up it for the race as well maybe we even push it up to 110 because we're absolutely flying and we didn't even need to go back out because we qualify comfortably into q2 while our teammate misses out by six tenths to alex album jack doing do we need someone else in that second seat i'll tell you what we do and we're gonna put someone else in that second seat for next season but, I mean, P8, what was it? Was it P20 he got? Which is very, very disappointing because our car feels pretty nice around here. And uh, the one one thing is that I noticed is we are really slow down the straights because we put a lot of downforce, which helps us just throw the car into these corners. And the car feels nice. And uh, obviously, it feels better than when we race online because we do have all those upgrades on the car. And it just, it just flows so nicely through each corner as we round the final corner for our first lap in Q2. Good on track limits. We, ha we haven't had any problems with track limits. So I think that is, again, because the car feels really good and we're really comfortable with it as it's a P7. And that might be good enough to potentially put us into Q2 as it's currently P10 ahead of Lance Stroll. I think the other five drivers we are quicker than. So we just have to be careful of Lance Stroll and that Aston Martin. But Fernando Alonso only did a 21-3. He was only a tenth quicker than us. And as we're on our first fly, uh, our final flying lap in Q3, all the drivers have finished their laps and we're still in P10. So we're in to Q3 for what is the first time in a long, long time. It's got to be at least five to six races we've made it into Q3. And uh, it feels good to finally be back here ahead of Lance Stroll. And now it's just anything we can do here it is is a bonus type thing you know we've made it into q3 we're gonna go on a used set of tires and then we'll go on a new set for the final lap just to see if maybe we could get a p8 p9 maybe if someone in the top nine has a bit of a stinker of a lap and the first lap is a 21 2 about a 10 for two quicker than we did in q2 and it, it's got us ahead of sergio perez who has to improve he has to put in a better lap as i, I believe he is coming up to the line now but we're on our lap and we're improving ourselves. Look at that. Two and a half temps. We're up by. Could we be starting inside the top six, top seven, top eight? You have a look at George Russell's time in the top left. He did a 26-7 in the first sector. We are almost three temps up 
of Mr. George Russell. I mean, granted, the first sector is our best sector. And then uh, the middle sector and the third sector is a little bit slower because of the straight line speed. But we've cut the corner a little bit. We turned in too early and that is the end of our lap. But the speed is promising. Our car feels very, very good. And you look at that. If we would have kept it on the track, we could have been looking at potentially a P7, maybe even a P6 if it was a phenomenal lap. But either way, Q3, P9, what a result that is. And that gives us a chance to fight for points in the sprint race tomorrow. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's sprint. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole. And Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Norris, Oscar Piastri, Verstappen, Russell, Sainz, Fernando Alonso, the rookie, Perez, Stroll, Albon, Bottas, Ocon, Gasly, Magnussen, Hulkenberg, Sonoda, Joe, Dewan, Sargent, and Nick De Vries. Which of these drivers will get pole position today? We'll soon find out. It's a sprint race weekend, so we usually use this to kind of see which tyres are better for the race weekend. But starting in P9... Uh, this could actually be a chance for potential points. The top eight score points. And uh, we're going to go out on the medium tyres because we want to be a bit more safe. We don't want to go on the softs and have them die on us. Especially as we've had tyre wear problems in the past. If you would have seen that Monza episode, we had tyre wear problems. If you look at everybody else's tyre, everybody else is on the soft. Except for Oscar Piastri who's starting P4. Who will be on the mediums as well. So I'm not sure if we made the right choice or the wrong choice. But the mediums should be working better. For the last three to four laps of this sprint race. So we will try and make some positions up there. And uh, we'll see what we can do as all the drivers are lining up. We need a good start. We need to get inside the top eight. That means we're going to have to beat a McLaren, Mercedes, Ferrari or an Aston Martin to score points. As the lights go out very, very quick. And we are underway. And look at Fernando Alonso. He's got up the middle of George Russell. And Carlos Sainz and Piastri is dropping down the order as well. As we're going to swoop around the outside of Carlos Sainz. Around the outside of Oscar Piastri. We're up into P6. Oscar Piastri has dropped four positions on those medium tyres. He's down to P8. What a start that is from us. What a terrible start that is from Piastri. Alonso had a great start as well as Carlos Sainz looks for a move down the inside. We gave him the room because the last thing we wanted is to be spun around or given damage and we'll drop down the order and not start near the front. Because remember, this isn't like the new style of a sprint race. This is the old style where we, wherever you finish is where you're going to start for the for the main races. We watched the replay of us going around the outside. I think the McLaren and the Ferrari had a bit of contact which compromised them around that uh, turn one, turn two. And it allowed us to sweep around the outside and, and make up a couple of positions. So it's, it's a fantastic start as uh, we're, we're into P7 as Piastri goes down the inside. Trying to hold on to this is going to be very difficult. And I did mention that we're running really high downforce. And you can just see, look at the straight line speed. We're dumping all the ERS. But Russell, around the outside, there's no DRS on this first lap. And they've both gone zooming past us as we try and hold it down the middle, getting the elbows out. We want to try and hold on to this P7. But Oscar Piastri, around the outside, is he going to get it done? He's off the track. Hey! FIA have a word. He's overtaken us off the track. But Piastri takes that P7. We're going to have to settle in for P8 and try and hold on to the back of him. He's on the medium tyres. So maybe uh, we might be able to hold on to the back of him, which we are doing all right with. If we can stay in his DRS, we might be able to hold off the, the incoming Sergio Perez and George Russell. But even with DRS, they're still going to close down in on us at a rapid rate of notches. Perez down the inside. We're going to try and swoop around the outside, take advantage, and maybe move up to P uh, P7. But Piastri bumps us off the road. What is this guy doing? He's Someone sort him out. This is outrageous. Piastri holds on to that P7. He holds it on for his life. We're going to have a look at this again. He's kind of in the middle of the track defending. And as we come around, he, ju he just opens up the steering wheel, forces us off, off the track. Oh, a little bastard. All right, well, Piastri holds on to P7, but we're going to try and get him back at some point. I'll tell you what, this might not be a bad point with DRS, this slipstream. We're going to go around the outside, and look at that! 
Perez and Russell with so much pace. Russell gets past both of us before the braking zone. We're going to try and brake late enough around the outside. We're up into P7. We're cooking. Points are on the cards with two and a half laps to go. We're cooking up something special here. As Piastri dropping down the order, he's down to P9, uh, P9 P10 now. And uh, the, the medium should start coming back to us as Russell dives down the inside. We're going side by side with the Mercedes. I didn't think we'd be fighting a three-way battle, uh, a four-way battle against a Mercedes, a McLaren, and a Red Bull for two points in the sprint race. We've lost track to the top six, and they're flying away. But at the end of the lap, we have nothing to defend against the speed of that Mercedes. With DRS, it's too fast. We tried to do the, do the tactic of going around the outside, but we can't get it done there and russell is through up into p7 there's straight line speed the ai straight line speed is unbelievable and i'll tell you who's not unbelievable jack doing we're fighting for a point in the sprint race we're scrapping away in the top eight and jack doing is down in p20 just chilling just chilling i mean it's the, it's the poor qualifying performance he's stuck in a drs train if he qualifies p12 he's probably still p12 in this sprint race right now so it's just a poor qualifying, which has cost him. And that's why we might need someone else in this team next year. We want someone else to try and pick up points because Doohan is not picking up any. And we're going to have to try and, and get our team up to P7 by ourselves in the constructor standings because I don't see Jack Doohan doing anything. Because we're on the final lap and George Russell, he is about seven, eight tenths ahead of us. We're trying to hang on to the back of him so we can get DRS on the run up to the line. But remember, the AI dump all their ERS on the final lap. So they're extra fast. And we're trying to hang on. And you're just going to see George Russell just pull away from us with the straight line speed of that Mercedes. If we don't get DRS, it is going to be very, very close between us and Oscar Piastri on the run down to the line. Because the line is quite far away from the final turn. And we're about a second away from George Russell. We are not going to get DRS on the run up to the line. Piastri's two tenths behind us. It's looking good for the McLaren driver. But we get a decent exit. It's three, three and a half tenths. Can we hold on from Oscar Piastri? Up to the line. Oscar Piastri just about beats us. And that's right, devastating. It's P9. It's P9 for the Grand Prix tomorrow. But we miss out on a point which would have been so, so important. Oh, it's about a car length he beats us by. Perez almost gets us up the, up the line as well. What a sprint race it was. There was so much action in that. But to just miss out is absolutely devastating. We were so, so close to picking up a point. But we do start P9 for tomorrow's race. If someone in the top 10 retires, it, it should be points. I mean, we've got Sergio Perez, Lance Stroll behind us. And after that, I think Welcome we're Welcome to Qatar. And hello from the desert rain. Well, there's not been much rainfall, but it's concentrated right here and just in time for the Qatar Grand Prix. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Lando Norris put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. And it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, Sainz, Russell, Oscar Piastri, the rookie, Perez, Stroll, Holkenberg, Albon, Bottas, Magnussen, Ocon, Gasly, Sonoda, Joe, Doohan, De Vries, and Logan Sargent. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. After the disappointment in the sprint race yesterday, we're going to try and pick up some points here in Qatar and we're going to try to lower the front wing just a little bit to give us that little bit extra straight line speed because it was terrible in the sprint race you saw it we could have DRS and the cars behind us would still be shooting past so it's frustrating yes but I feel like it's good as well because it gives us that extra pace in that first sector in that middle sector to stay with them so that we can get drs for the straight and we are starting on the soft tires as well i want to try and stay with that front pack and break away from the cars behind that we're going to be fighting for or fighting against should i say for that last points position for p10 maybe even p9 you don't know but it's going to be difficult we have to keep i think lance stroll is going to be the one that we have to keep behind us if we want p10 or we're going to need something in the top 10 to happen as we are underway in qatar for the second time in this episode but this is for the main race this is where points go down for the top 
10 and it's down into turn one. Are we going to do the same trick as we go around the outside? We can't get around the outside of Russell, but we can on Perez and Carlos Sainz. We find our way up into P7. It's a good start. Sainz is on the hard tyres, so we want to try and stay ahead of him as Perez squeezes on through. And uh, we gave him a bit of a squeeze, but he found his way through anyway. He's up in a P7, but Carlos Sainz, you dirty, dirty bastard. He's hit off the track. He's done it again. He's done it again. He's in that little mug. He's on the hard tyres. So he sent it back at him. Down into the hairpin. And we're going to try and stay ahead of him as we swoop around the outside. See you later. He's on the hard tyres. So he didn't want to drop behind him. But he just sent it again down in that, into that corner. And he thought we were just going to move out of the way like we did in the sprint race. But no, 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 mate. We're getting our elbows out now. This is this is our time to shine. We ain't, we ain't playing friendly today as uh, we hold on to that P8. And it's kind of nice that we can kind of be there with the with the big gunners like like Aston Martin, Ferrari, McLaren. We can battle these guys and not just have to wave them by. And we're on like 108 AI. I think maybe I'm just good around this track or the AI are not that good because yeah, it's, it's, I, I seem to have the pace. I just don't have the straight line speed, which uh, is a big, big problem. And you're going to see it. We have to dump all that ERS down this straight just to pull away enough from the McLaren behind so he doesn't come zooming past. Even with DRS, he is going to close down. You can see, look at the top left, look at that time. And we're going to have to defend against Austin Piastri, who decides to stick behind us as we uh, break very, very late. And he almost has a go back at us on the little switchback. But yeah, that's that, that's the problem that we seem to have. Down the straight, just, hold, just dump that ERS and just hope they don't get close enough. Just park your car in a good enough spot as we do make a mistake on that fast right-hander. And here you go. Oscar Piastri is going to say thank you very much. He's right on the back of us. We're going to let him go down the inside. And uh, he's going to get the DRS as well. Well, we're both going to get DRS. But Piastri is through. Next up is Science. So you can see that gap. So you've got Science and Lance Stroll. Carlos Sainz in P uh, P10. Lance Stroll in P11. If we can break away from Lance Stroll... This could be a very, very strong chance at points. We're not too worried about signs. We're on lap five. His tyres are going to be starting to work better than us. But we do not want the car in P11, who currently is actually Alex Albon, or now Nico Hulkenberg, to, to close on in to within in a second as they are going side by side. Yes, please. Keep doing that, lads. You keep going side by side and wasting each other's time. We will keep uh, zooming away. And yeah, if we can make that uh, bigger than a second, which we are, we're holding on. We could be picking up a point here in Qatar, at least being a very good chance of scoring a point as we're trying to hang on to the back of Sainz. We're doing a very good job at holding on to the back of him. We're just dumping that ERS and then getting that DRS down the straight. But we are dropping out just about now. The hards seem to be working a little better than these softs, which are around like 40 to, to 50%. And they're starting to wear down. So we're going to chuck on a set of medium tyres. And also, I don't want the drivers behind to undercut us. We've got a two-second advantage on them. So we come into the pits now so that uh, there's no risk of Hulkenberg, Albon, getting any undercut on us as uh, we wasn't too familiar with the pit lane. So very, very slow. But we stay ahead. And, and Hulkenberg... And uh, the Williams of Alex Albon do come into the pits. I tell you what, tons of cars are coming into the pits. So we need a good pit stop here in Qatar in the pit lane. Come on, lads. Good pit stop. We No tyre failures. No, uh, no, no stinky uh, wheel guns. Oh, the front left. Brilliant. That was about a four-second pit stop. We're behind the house. Oh, my God. We're, we're bottle jobs. We are actually a bunch of bottle jobs. Every time, every time we need a, we need a pit stop to go well, whether it's in F123 or F1 manager, the pit crew just stink up the gaff. How do, oh, we had we had that two second advantage over Hulkenberg and we've lost it in the pits and now we're behind Hulkenberg. So we're going to have to find a way past the Haas when we don't have the straight line speed. I mean, I guess the one advantage is he's not going to have DRS on any cars up ahead. So... Maybe we could get close enough where we could send it into turn one and then hopefully break away. But that is very, very frustrating because I thought we had a two-second buffer and that has just disappeared and we're kind of stuck behind uh, Nico Hulkenberg instead. But it does allow us to actually uh, get some ERS back. So we're just sitting behind him, building up our ERS. You can see 58% now, which is a lot better than when we came into the pits. We came into the pits with literally like 5% because we're having to dump it the whole time and we are very very close 
coming out of that fast left-hander as we come into the final turn. If we could get a good exit here, we could find a way past Hulkenberg and just dump our ERS in hopes that we can break away this following lap so he can't get DRS because we know we're faster in the first sector. We know we're faster in the middle sector as well. So we go down the inside into turn one, up into the points payer position once again. And Piastri just out of the pits onto the hard tires. Cold hard tires. We're going to push. If we can stay with Oscar Piastri and potentially get his DRS at the end of the lap, this could be absolutely huge for a race with the drivers behind and it was very good through there the double right hander and into the hairpin as we go into the hairpin get good traction on the exit and you see look at the top left eight temps to piastri eight temps almost to nico hulkenberg as well could we be breaking the drs this is the most important lap of the grand prix if we break the drs from Hulkenberg, which we're doing right now as we run a little wide on the left-hander, the long left-hander, which is very difficult to get right. If we break that DRS on Hulkenberg, this could be P10 for us in the race as we come into the triple right-hander, the fast-speed right-handers. You don't even have to lift on these right-handers. It is full throttle. And once again, it is the left-hander. We have to lift just a little bit, but we're just going to stay in DRS range of Piastri, and we're out of the DRS range of Hulkenberg. What a lap that is here in Qatar. That is a that is a masterpiece of a lap. We have just cooked. We have cooked to stay in that DRS range. And that's huge. Look at the gap now to Hulkenberg. It is 1.6 as Alex Albon goes around the outside. You've got a three-car battle between Albon, Hulkenberg, and Bottas. Please keep fighting so that we can break away, we can stay away, and we can finally get points, which has been an awful long time. It's been so long. The only time we scored points this season was in Imola, where we scored all six of our points. So this will be our second ever point scoring finish in Formula 1 as our teammate is absolutely no way. He's down in B20. He's, he's showing that this car isn't as great as what we're doing. We are putting it in a place where it shouldn't be. The, the, the qualified performance has put us in this position. When we can qualify well, we can convert it into a good race uh, into a good race car, into a good race position, and we can maximise what we could get out of it. You can see Piastri's gone. On the hard tyres, he's shown that that McLaren is too fast for our car, but we have shown that we can hold on and, and keep that gap from the, the Williams of Albon, from the Haas of Nico Hülkenberg. We're about their speed. Uh, on the development shot, we're around those cars as well. So if we're lapping around the same speed, that's perfect. That's all we need to do, as it looks like a Williams is going slow. Logan Sargent is out the Grand Prix. Jack Doohan moves up a place, and that's the only thing it really does, because it's too late in the Grand Prix for a safety car to go out. So uh, Sargent is out of the Grand Prix. Jack Doohan moves up to p20 what a stinker of a race by the way jack doing has had how is he in p20 nowhere near any of the cars up ahead i don't know i i'd have to watch his race to figure out what's actually happened because we have put in a phenomenal race to come home and score in the points we've only got one more quarter to go on the final lap hamilton wins the grand prix which is big for him but it's gonna be an unbelievable day for us as up to the line it's a points position it's p10 for bad for mb motorsport look at us celebrating with the team and it's a p10 an unbelievable result and uh you can see lance stroll actually got kind of got caught up in the thick of it i think he had a poor start and he couldn't get out of that drs train and that's kind of why he wasn't really much of a problem for us because if he did i think he would have found a way past us and he probably would have got that 10th place over us because the, the top five teams are so far away from us right now it is very difficult to get some points but we've done a great job to score points here in Qatar. And look at that, P10. We absolutely love it. And it's a great day for Charles Leclerc as well, because Max Verstappen down into P7. Awful day for him in the championship. And our teammate, let's find him. Where is he? There he is, down in P20. Jack Doohan. I mean, he was six seconds off of Guan Yu Zhou, but I think part of that is well. I think when Logan Sargent slowed down, that cost him quite a bit of time. But still, he was nowhere to be found. And there you go. Three more points on Esteban Oka. We're winning the rivalry. We're cooking. We are genuinely cooking. We're carrying this team. We're the owner of the team, but we're carrying the team. And uh, doing, mate, you need 
big performances at the end of this season if you want to keep that seat because we're getting money and we're going to bring in a solid solid driver seven points for the season for us seven points for the season in the constructor standards as well three behind Haas and we've got another 11 to Alpine which I think is way uh, too big of a gap we're not going to close down to the Alpine so we've got to see if we can find four more points this season in what I think is four more races and uh, we could potentially pick up a P7, which would be an unbelievable result. If you guys are enjoying this series, make sure you go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, and go ahead and leave a comment as well. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.